Welcome back to Wickerson Studios. Michael Wickerson here. This is finishing up the AI Copilot to AI Stable Diffusion, which I'm going to call AI to AI. Just a simple um, expression uh, to kind of define what we're doing with uh, starting with NumPy, and then we'll move on to NumPy Basics to NumPy Advanced to Pandas and into Psychic Learn, hopefully by the time the summer's out. What we have here is the fifth GH script. It's quite extensive. What I have here uh, tucked within it, which is where I left off uh, when I finished my last video, I actually dipped into this fifth script, uh, but I finished it. So where we were is with this data visualization, which is a um, kind of uh, uh, generative chair design very loosely for any AI renderings. Uh, and we're going to go with expressing conditional logic with uh, arrays. And in here you have... Um, the uh, NumPy where component and NumPy where continued component, uh, which is scriptable. And I've done some interesting data that if there was ever a negative number, it would jump to two and then down to negative two uh, on negatives and two with positives. So you're kind of cleaning up data. And then the visualizations here, I just want to show once pretty simple grasshopper script, which I think I talked about live. But if I change my random function here, you can have they have this different design. So it's a pretty tight watertight form. There's a couple errors where it does get kind of thick and thin and jump and twist. But the, basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, um, using a boolean conditional to select from the series or select from the range and if you know ranges in series they come out as integers 0 to 9 or 0 to 10 and then they also come out from 0 to um, uh, 0.1 to point uh, or to 1.0 so it's just selecting between them and then i'm just doing a little bit of dosi doing i'm not really getting into the data visualizations i may call this one data visualization but i'm not going to spend too much time with it then we do another conditional and then we kind of leave this and show you what we were working with if i go back up uh universal conditions are where we started so i want to jump on to here and show you that we started with those universal element wise uh, array functions then we went on to array uh, oriented programming which i showed how to move it from a string into something that maybe would be more visual and to use this example uh, which you'd see in the last video where i tapped into galapagos <coughs> and then what i'm taking off for this one is to pull you through the rest of these functions so i'm just going to tuck this one down so it doesn't show up every time i click grasshopper <coughs> and uh then we get into mathematical and statistical operations. And I think I actually had it in here. Unary functions, array-oriented programming. Uh, that's what came second. Right here, array-oriented programming. <coughs> and we covered that on the last video. And now putting a certain size of data to build a grid, which is what we were playing around with. We are playing around with the array uh, mesh grid. And then I think what I'd done is on this is we got into the basic statistical methods and I didn't give it its own category, uh, like a big uh, blurb in here with that uh, ASCII text. But uh, what we did was we jumped into there, um, array oriented programming, uh, basic mathematicals. We wanted to jump in for the conditional logic and get to the min and then into the axis selection for the max. Uh, right here, uh, or at least I had it there. Let me think. I guess I put it down here. The min, the max, the where, conditionals. Where did I put all that stuff? Sorry to jump around like crazy. Uh, the diagrid, the min, max. Oh, I think we're all the way back into this. Oh, well, that was the binary function. Yeah, the binary functions were min and max and modifications. Yeah, that's where I tucked it all. So I'm calling that as an ND max. Okay. Well, I got a little screwed up, but it's all in here. Um, if I fold down to the next text that comes, these are writing themselves with GitHub Copilot methods of Boolean arrays. So that's where we went after methods of Boolean arrays. But here's where I tucked in all those min and maxes. And so there was methods. And here are all the ones you could build. And I think I built all of these with a little bit of a guide of what they do. Um, yeah, so mathematical statistical methods of uh, cumulative sum. Yeah. Basically, I did all those. Sorry to be so jumbly. I don't want to go through them. They're pretty basic. I didn't do any data visualization with all of these. And then we get down to this methods for Boolean arrays, which was kind of nice because you're now coercing the data from zero to ones, and then you're using a, a best for Boolean arrays. Um, you can actually find out information on each one. Uh, the parentheses were essential for this kind of logic. 
And then if I go down, you're going to get into sort functions. And that's exactly where I ended um, in this fifth chapter. So access method for sorting and then a copying method for sorting. And then I wanted to get in and do all these to finish up. And that was it. And they were only for 1D arrays. So it's not that exciting, but it is a pretty fast moving thing logistically. A lot of the vanilla nodes do it in Grasshopper 1 and Grasshopper 2, but it's kind of nice to have a little bit of play that you can jump in here and have an effect on this. So as we go through all of those down to the end, we're going to jump over to file input and output with AR, uh, NPy, uh, ND arrays. And that's it. NumPy arrays. And that's how we're going to leave it. I also didn't manufacture these. You can go in and call them anytime for the IP address here. And then you just have to call the words for intersect, union, uh, difference, and XOR. And that will get you started um, with the fifth one. I'm going to keep this very short because it's gotten very tedious through these videos. I may go in and show a breakdown of this uh, of this data visualization after, even though it would be nice to see how it's put together, but I think you'd figure it out on your own with some basic grasshopping skills. It's a dozen or so uh, nodes to do it. So that's it. We'll end with that. And maybe just for consistency, we'll go back up to array oriented programming and universal functions, which is what this began with. And then after I got through those two, I wanted to go into easily expressing conditional logic. So it might be good to scroll down here, uh, array oriented programming and the conditional logic. I think it'd be good to start with that as a symbol, the conditional logic. We can zoom in and see that it's having an effect on a geometry. I think I've saved this and that'll be the poster image for this one. And I might do a data visualization, but now we're on to this program. So we're going to save it and we're going to start this again as saving as um, the sixth and final one for basic NumPy. Um, and then we'll go into advance or we'll jump hard into pandas. So we're going to type that one in there and that should allow us, if I go here, file save document as now I don't need any of these original working documents. This whole package will be done as long as I get one more in here, finish up this one and you'll get everything from the hops example to the GP four or GPT, um, three, uh, method the node that's out there for you to start introducing chat GPT into these scripts, which is going to make things really wild because that's AI coming at it from another angle. And you'll get all of these in the package at wickersonstudios.com. A uh, little shameless self-promotion. Uh, what you want to do is you want to go into Wickerson Studios uh, and that will load up and I'll show you what I've basically pulled together. So what I have here is the full bundle is four years of work. All the past stuff that used to be open source, I've just run in here into this packet. I've set every price of everything to like a buck 99. I am offering tutorials to people that need an hour to discuss things, but I'm not really, you know, I'm not getting too busy with that. And then what I did was this NumPy and you've got part one, two, three, uh, 3B, 4, and this will be part 5, and then 6 will finish it. And that will all roll into this package. I'll probably roll all 6 of these as basic NumPy into its own package as well for a buck ninety nine if people want it. And then I have my 300 scripts for beginners. I have my beginner complete um, off the shelf, which I did for MGSM out of Cairo, American University. Well, not out of, out of Cairo, but not affiliated with some faculty there. And uh, then all the rest are 40 other bundles, which get wrapped into everything you want. But this is the package that you might want to get. It's every single thing. And if you give it to me, send me your GitHub and account number, and I'll update you on the private repo as I develop more NumPy and NumPy uh, general. So that's a lot of information. Um, and this package is coming your way, number five. And I'm going to finish up not only with, let's go down here, not only with um, hang on, it's taking a little while to get to the end. How many lines of code do we have here? Uh, over 3000 closing in on four. We're going to go to file input. Then we're going to do linear algebra and we're going to end with a random walks example, which would normally have been brought into Matplot library into a graph chart, but we're going to take that simulated many random walks at once. And we're going to put that into something graphically into grasshopper. So I'm really excited about that. I'm going to stop streaming. I'm going to stop this recording. Um, and